Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. After last week's video on toy rotations, I figured it would be very helpful to show you all the different play spaces I've set up for Stella throughout the house because it definitely does help to have those spaces throughout the house in keeping her workshop very focused and working on the skills that she's developmentally ready for and interested in while also keeping our home a home in a place where she can also have open-ended play and art space and reading nooks and things like that. I'm going to give you a quick tour throughout the house where we do have spots that she is playing. I wanted to go ahead and give her a special space where we can work on actual activities and this can be kind of her little preschool area. So don't feel pressured to dedicate a special room for your child but if you are interested in seeing how that lays out we'll start with the actual Montessori playroom that we have. I'm taking a closer look at Stella's shelf. You'll notice I've got a little bit of an autumn theme going on, but nothing too crazy. Fall in Chicago is very brief, so sometimes it's very difficult to see what fall actually looks like here. So I decided to at least bring some of that inside. I also have this little space where I show some of the books that are kind of going with the theme of what we're trying to either study or learn or things that I noticed Stella is really into. For example, I've got this autumn book that just has some beautiful pictures of what autumn is supposed to look like. So hopefully we'll have some days that look like this, but definitely feels like we go from summer to winter overnight here in Chicago. This I am a bunny book that was passed down to us is wonderful because he goes through all the different seasons. And so we can kind of go through this is what we're in right now with summer and then eventually moves into the fall time. And then because it's so color heavy, I got a little colors book for her. As of right now, Stella's not really into color sorting or anything, but I'm just trying to expose her to some different colors. And what was interesting about this book is it gives you a variety of different shades of the same colors. I just thought it was a very beautiful way to introduce some different colors for her. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about the actual activities up here because I do post frequently on Instagram and on this channel what all the different activities are that we work on with Stella. Very briefly, we're, we've got a ring stacker. We've got some matching activities with cars. Uh, we've got a little posting activity with these pegs. We've got her little sewing block that she really loves. But this was my attempt to see if we are ready for any color matching or not and it seems like the answer is no one I'm gonna have to rotate this one out but this is rings and a dowel with color matching this is a pounding toy and we've got the little bins with boxes and again I was trying to see if we've got any color matching that we're interested in just yet and it seems the answer is no these cards are still here and just today she was already working with them so again these aren't going anywhere anytime soon it seems so this is what essentially our work and study area looks like now to give a quick overview of the room as a whole I do still have her little diaper changing area over here, but I did add this section. So originally I wanted this area to be a little reading nook for her, but what we got to be her reading nook was much bigger than I expected. So that got moved somewhere else. And instead I set up this little standing desk area essentially. So I had noticed that Stella was actually bringing some materials over to her weaning table and she enjoyed either reading books there or she enjoyed just standing and working there. So I figured not only do we need to really display some art at her eye level now, what better area than to do it than this empty wall and also add a little table. This is one of the tables that I thought was going to work as a weaning table and it was far too tall for that, but it is the perfect height for her to use as a little standing desk. And she loves bringing her crayons here. This is her current work in progress. And this is where I display some other themed books. And that's why we've got the different fall themed images up here as well. And so let me see if I can peel these off. Uh, so we have these little 3M command strips that are just Velcro. Uh, that we put on the back of these picture frames and we've got them both on the top and the bottom so that way they're not very easily moved i'll show you if stella comes it's not very easy to just accidentally knock down just by pushing on it and when we first edit these i did watch to make sure she wasn't going to try to break the glass what i've seen some people do is you can actually take the glass out and just laminate the pictures inside but stella's been very careful about just just very lightly touching the picture if she's very interested in it. So we haven't had any issues with her even trying to peel these off. But the reason I really like this option is because it is sturdier than just putting it on a little nail and it is very easy to peel those off and move them higher as she grows taller. She also moved her little flower over here from her weaning table. So now she's got this beautiful little art space. Sometimes she'll bring some other materials to work on here. Sometimes she'll just stand and read the books. Standing back around, I do still have her little mirror and every time that I think it's time to go ahead and get rid of it, she surprises me by interacting with it. So I've set up her musical instrument here because this is where she'll usually take it out and start looking at herself in the mirror as she shakes all the instruments around. So that mirror is not going anywhere just yet and it, right behind it is the window. So sometimes she'll walk behind the mirror and look outside the window. And I think it's very interesting for her to see outside and also see inside at the same time. 
And let's say she does have her Montessori rug and she's gotten really good about bringing her activities from here over to the rug and working with them on the rug. And just like when she was younger, she does still have this little basket of stuffed animals. And again, this is kind of more for imaginative play. A lot of times she'll grab these guys and go somewhere else in the house because she's really starting to treat this area as her work area and the rest of the house is her play area. So now we're right in the next room over and this is Stella's little reading nook. This is something that we got for her first birthday. It's a little princess tent. Just for a quick view, where the rug is is where I originally wanted to put the princess tent, but it was far too big for that. So if we pan around, it is right in the next room over. And so we've got a little plush rug that we put in there to make it more cozy. And we've got her little animals and some pillows. She brought her basket of books over here by herself. It used to be in the playroom, but she lugged it all the way over here once. And ever since then, this has been her favorite spot to read. And if we pan over next to this, we've also got her nuggets. So this has become her reading and her gross motor skills area. I'll do different configurations of the nuggets. Sometimes we'll do different activities with it. I've shown some of those on my channel before. And so the final area that I want to go ahead and share with you is actually here in our family room. These used to house some decorations for us, but Stella was getting very interested in them and they're extremely fragile and things that are really special to us. So redirecting her definitely didn't work and she does like to spend a lot of time in this room. So I figured what we will do instead is actually go ahead and take those out and put some materials here. For the most part, what this has become is her open-ended play space. We've got two of these lamp shelves and on the top here we've got a DIY material that I made a while ago that she kept bringing into this room so I figured we might as well go ahead and rotate it into here but the rest of the items are definitely more open-ended. Uh, here we've got a wooden plane that's got different people and suitcases in here that she can work kind of on posting with but mostly she's just using it for open-ended play as well as a box of cars. You'll notice three are missing because those are being used for her matching activity. There is a wire in the back, but it's cable tied to the lamp so you can't actually tug it out and then it's secured behind the cabinet as well. Now, quick note, a wooden plane and wooden cars aren't actually Montessori aligned per se because that's not very realistic. Wood doesn't necessarily mean Montessori. A plane that is metal or cars that are metal would definitely be more Montessori aligned. But from everything that I could find personally, those had a lot of small parts that could easily break off and Stella is not gentle enough for those just yet. So this is a more safe and practical option. And on this other shelf, I've actually just got a pouch that I put some silk scarves in so she can work on unzipping it and taking them out. I've got her basket of her stacking cups and I've got them all separated out because right now she's working on nesting them properly together. And then we do have her pounding toy here. And because I've already got a pounding toy on her actual shelf, this is essentially a repetition of that, which is why I brought it out over here. But she does enjoy pounding toys and shape sorting right now. So she's been enjoying having this one here as well. And if we rotate over, actually, we've got another bench with a little shelf under it, some animals. Right now we've got insects out, and these are not necessarily ones that we work on with language, although I will call them out to her now and again. This shelf is more for her just to use, again, for open-ended play, so she likes to put them all around the house or line them up on her own. Then we've got a basket of balls, and I usually try to have a book in every single space that she's in, so this is the book that we've got out right now. Then she's got a little pool toy, and her wagon that she also uses as a pool toy. And in the corner over here is actually her little cleaning station as well. And the final play space that I have for Stella is actually right here in our master bedroom. This is our console table right under our TV. And I set this up because we were spending some time here with Stella either putting away laundry or cleaning the room. And while she is interested in helping with that a lot of the times, sometimes she isn't really interested in it or she would like to leave before the task is completely finished. And I can't leave the room the way that it is. So I found that having some materials here for her to interact with was really helpful in that. I usually keep a couple of books here. I've got this colors book and this summer book that is going to have to be rotated out pretty soon. You'll notice I do have a lot of stuffed animals. Some of these are mine, some of these are hers, but she does really enjoy playing with them right now since it's kind of more of an open-ended play area for her. There's a basket of the animals down here as well as up here, but these guys are strategically placed to cover some of the wires that we needed to hook up the TV and her sound machine. She isn't here always supervised, so I don't have an issue with the wires being more or less exposed. But the activities that I bring up here tend to be items that I know that she's interested in or she's displaying and interested in with some of the materials that are on her shelf that I've previously rotated out and I don't want to necessarily rotate them into the shelf because there's already something similar there. So for example, the scary posting activity she really likes, but we currently do have some uh, pegs that go inside the holes downstairs as well. So that is a variation of posting that she's working on already, but since she is really interested in posting, I want to give her a variation of those materials. So we've got this one that is the carrot posting activity that has different sizes to work with. 
as well as this pop-up toy that has the different colors and a little bit of a variation of posting here as well. So again, something that I know she's interested in and would enjoy and is working on that skill that she's really trying to perfect right now, but is not taking up space in having three or four very similar items on her shelf. And the final item I've got here is this shape sorter and I just put the little shapes in this little basket. Now you'll notice I don't have any trays or anything up here because there's just not the space for that and all of these activities are quite contained within themselves except this guy does need a little basket. But for these two activities, they really are kind of by themselves and it's very easy for her to take them off this little shelf on her own and put them back. So I'm very strategic in choosing activities similar to this when I put them up on this shelf as well. But all that to say that it is possible to make a little shelf for your child to access independently even if it's not one of those big shelves that we've got downstairs in the play area. If you can still make do with something that you do have as long as the child is able to access it independently. So this is giving you some ideas of how you can implement different Montessori style play areas in your home. And until next time, I hope you stay safe.